Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. It's finally time to start painting the Farmall Super C. We've got the main powertrain here all together and ready to paint before adding other pieces onto it. Then I have the front bolster casting here all cleaned up and ready to go. That'll bolt right onto the front of the engine after it's painted. And then here I have a little surprise. This is a narrow front that I bought for the tractor. I'm going to paint that up and run it as a narrow front. Putting a narrow front on was just a, the most sensible decision for me. It had a wide front on it, of course, and the turning radius on those old international wide fronts are about half a mile. That's narrow front, the tractor will turn, the turning radius is essentially the length of the tractor as one wheel stays in place when you turn the wheel hard. Super for a chore tractor, backing up wagons, getting into tight spaces, exactly what we use this tractor for. I did this with the MD, but it's been, I guess, a couple years. In this video, I want to, as well as painting things, I want to walk you through how I do it. You know, I'm just working in the shop out of my home. It's not like I have a paint booth and all this ventilation, filtration stuff. So I do the best that I can, and so far I don't have any ticks or memory losses or chronic conditions or skin problems. I think I'm doing all right. But first let me show you the process I use to get ready to paint. All the pieces get cleaned with a knotted wire brush on a grinder and wire brushes on a drill. For the greasy stuff, some of it I pressure wash and then, you know, degrease at the same time. And some of it I run through the parts washer. It just depends on the size of the piece. And the goal here on castings like this is not to get all the paint off. I mean, in some places it is pretty much all off, but I get all the loose paint off. So if I run over it a few times with the grinder and that paint is still sticking on there, I figure it's not coming off. I will take parts off that I think are going to affect the, the texture of the finish where you'll see that old paint underneath. So most of the paint is gone. Some still remains. But you do want to get all the oil and grease residue off. And I found that the pressure washing and degreasing method really worked well for doing that. But as final insurance, I wipe everything down with lacquer thinner on a cotton. Usually an old t-shirt works best so you can see what kind of dirt you're picking up if you use a light color and what kind of grease you're picking up. Some places I'll go over multiple times because obviously oil on the surface or grease you're not going to get very good paint adhesion. And then after I'm done with the degreasing, I go through and mask off all the areas that I don't want paint on. There's lots of them here. These guys, pieces to be added later. Here where the brakes go on. The axles are masked off because I'll paint them black later on. Obviously we don't want the PTO shaft painted. That'd make it a real bear to hook things up to it. Hole where the starter goes. A hole underneath where you access the, the timing mark and the clutch, where the cross shaft goes through for the brakes and the clutch. The other thing which I forgot to mention is I chase all the bolt holes. So any frame mounting bolts that have rust or crud inside, I chase them out with a tap to get them cleaned out. And the other thing that happens with bolt holes on internationals, these are actually pieces of cork that at the factory they would put in unused frame mounts for mounting cultivators or whatnot later on to keep crud from getting in there. If those corks are in good shape, I just leave them in. And if they're not in good shape, I just take a wine bottle cork and shave it down to what I need and put it in the hole and cut it off and it looks factory that way. And of course I also had to go around and trim all of the gasket maker off that it had oozed out. I do that with a utility knife and a screwdriver, screwdriver with a blade that I sharpen up and just kind of scrape away at it, cut it and then scrape away at it and it all comes off. Now as I said, I don't have a perfect painting facility. Who does work at home? I guess the next best thing is being able to paint outside, but usually I'm painting on days when it's too cold because I do this work in the winter or like today, threat of rain or I can't move the parts out. So I'm part painting in the shop. My shop is a mess compared to what it used to be when it was a nice clean wood shop anyway. I'm not too worried about paint getting up, but I do hang you know, some poly around my tool board on the other side, hang cloths for things that I don't want to get painted. Everything's kind of tinged red in here now, and it just is what it is. So I paint with the doors and windows partially open. I don't want too much wind blowing through here. First piece of PPE is cap. You want red paint in your hair. And I use a respirator with a combination charcoal and fiber filter in it. I seal the respirator with Vaseline tight to my face. I wear gloves when I paint. I wear long sleeves. 
no, it's not perfect, you know. I I understand that, but this is the way I do it, and it's always worked just fine for me. The paint I use is Martin Senor paint, which is Napa's house brand, I think. Anyway, it comes pre-mixed, so this is epoxy primer, this is red oxide. I use one coat of this primer, and after the primer dries, which primer dries almost instantly, I use this for the top coat. It comes at Napa pre-mixed in International Harvester Red. It's Martin Senor 3.5 VOC International Harvester Red. The nice thing I found about this paint is really forgiving. I started out when I was doing tractors using higher price paint and I found that when spraying it, it was less forgiving. By less forgiving, I mean if you didn't get your spray pattern just right, you would see it, particularly on sheet metal, not so much on cast, cast metal. This paint, you can tend to spray over it again and it's not as noticeable if you have a bit of a light spot or something like that. So I'm happy with this. I painted, gosh, four tractors, a baler, um, a hay wagon. I've painted a whole bunch of stuff with this and it's reasonably priced and one of the best things about it is you do all three coats one right after the other. You know, one coat of primer, two coats of this stuff and you don't have to wait. When I used to use the old cheapo like Valve's Velspar tractor supply paint not only does the paint fade really quickly but you put on primer one day then you wait and then you put on top first top coat the next day and then you wait and then you put on second top coat I'm never going back to that stuff it's worth the money to buy a little better paint so let's mix up the primer normally I do this with a mask on I'm not doing it with a mask on because I want to talk to you it's not going to kill me I'll be all right trust me no oh, needs a lot of stirring it's been a while since I've been into this primer all right, I got the paint all mixed up. This is what I use for a mixing cup. You know, they usually give them to you free if you buy paint someplace. It's got both ounces on this scale here and those strange things, milliliters too. I don't know what they're for. And that's got different ratios along the sides. I rarely ever use those. I just use this. So this primer's to be mixed eight to four in painter speak or two to one in everyday person speak, which means I put in two parts of primer to one part of thinner. And it's always a bit of a guessing game how much to mix up. Fortunately, if you have a little bit of this left, you can put it back in the can because it doesn't have hardener in it. Just reducer. So, let's see. Let's go for... We got quite a bit to paint here. 18 ounces of paint and 9 of reducer would be 27 ounces. Stir it up all nice. Now to spray the paint, I use an HVLP gun, high volume, low pressure. And this is an Ingersoll Rand 270G, I think is the number on it. I had this one for probably 15 years, it never let me down, but I'll tell you what, it was getting tired. So I got a new one, exactly the same, 270G, Ingersoll Rand still makes the same one. It's not a fancy gun, it just gets the job done, it's easy to clean and take apart, so I stick with what works. And we always, always pour our paint through a strainer, just in case any little bits got into it. We don't want them clogging up the gun. Then with this paint, I use lacquer thinner for cleanup. And I always keep a bucket of my used lacquer thinner and the solids settle out to the bottom and you can get more than one use out of it. And I stick my painting stuff like my mixing cup in here and just let them sit until I'm done and then I can do a final cleaning on them. Since I've never used this new spray gun before, I'm gonna to have to adjust the controls and there's three of them. You've got your pressure regulator, so um, I'm normally spraying at about 25 PSI. I think these guns go up to 40. That's the low pressure in the low pressure system. And then you've got a fluid control knob which um, controls how much paint you're putting out per spray how densely it's going out and then on here's a pattern control knob as you turn it you get a longer spray out of here or a more spot spray so I'm going to adjust that but I got to put on my mask first we coat this gasket here on the mask with Vaseline don't worry about the paint on my gloves it's already dry <laughs> it's not getting mixed in and then we're ready maybe yeah. <sighs> Luke I am your father I can never resist that joke with a mask.
That's it for primer. What you saw me doing is when I go to clean the gun out after I'm done, I run three separate little splashes of lacquer thinner through it to clean it out. And then I wipe it with a paper towel in between. Here's what primer looks like. No problem to spray this paint. Sprays very easily. Here's the front pedestal. You know, getting into all these nooks, nooks and crannies, you're never going to be perfect. You do it as best you can. No paint job is ever perfect. That's a good thing to always remember when you're painting. It's never going to be perfect. And one of the nice things about painting on cast metal is you can go back and touch up with a brush and the texture of the paint isn't so much of a problem because you're working on rough cast metal. So with that front bolster, if I see any areas that obviously need some paint, I'll just put a brush to it, a small like detail brush. I use that for touch up all the time. Now for the paint, the mixing ratio for this is eight to two to one. So our eight parts, I'm gonna do two and a half times, we're gonna go to 20. And two parts reducer, so since I'm doing a two and a half batch, that would be five ounces of reducer. Bring it up to 25. And then one part of hardener, which would be two and a half ounces. We'll just eyeball that. Stir it all up. The pot life on this paint with hardener in it is kind of an astounding three or four hours at 70 degrees and it's only about 60 degrees here today. I got plenty of time. If I have extra after the first coat, I'll just leave it in the gun and start second coat with it or add to it. Now, I have to <laughs> I have to make a Lester comment. I don't know if you remember Lester from when I was painting the MD, but he said that my paint looks like Alice Chalmers orange. The camera doesn't get the color right, so the paint is gonna look like a lighter red than it is in real life. And the other thing is that I found by looking at the MD since I've had it out in the sun and working for a while, the paint actually, the red deepens up after it's in the sunlight and cures for a period of time. So that's the story with that. Through the strainer and into the gun. This paint's thicker than the primer is, so I usually have to adjust the gun settings. And I use that wall of poly plastic that I have to check my settings before I start spraying on the tractor. Here's the first coat of paint. I'm terrible at panning shots. <laughs> Here's the pedestal. It's interesting casting in the side inside of it. And then the bottom of it where the two wheels hook on the front. And there is the casting for the two wheels. I had about a third of my paint left over from the first coat, so I'm mixing up another double batch not quite as much second coat's probably the worst coat for me because <laughs> the appearance isn't changing all that much it gets a little shinier and smoother but it keeps it, it's hard to keep track sometimes where you covered and where you have it you got to be real careful and remember kind of which you've hit and you're going over things for the third time it's like I've done this before twice That's it, second coat's all done. When I'm done painting, I do the normal three lacquer thinner washout, and then I take the tip, whatever you call it, nozzle, put it in here, put some lacquer thinner in there so the nozzle can soak, clean off the outside of the gun, then put the lid on the whole thing. You see you get a little bit 
the clear that'll soak the guts of this in lacquer thinner. Until next time. Looks very good. Looks like a new tractor. Kind of is a new tractor. A 70 year old new tractor. Second coat makes it look nice and glossy and shiny. But I have to say this camera just doesn't do it justice. I'm looking at it through the camera and looking at it in person and it's so much lighter on camera. It's the next day, the paint is all dry and I brought out a camera with better color rendition to see if I can show it to you guys more accurately. To me this looks more accurate and like I said, it'll deepen as it cures. Before I finish this video, there's one other thing I want to do and that's get this front bolster back on and put the narrow front back on here. Not back on, it's going on for the first time. I want to see what it looks like. I forgot to paint these nuts, so I'll have to paint them with a brush afterwards. It spins around just fine. One of the things I've heard about Super C's is they're light as a feather to steer when they got a narrow front on them. Guess I'll find out. That does it for the first round of painting on the Super C anyway. There will be many more rounds of cleaning parts and painting to come and adding them on the tractor. I think that the next milestone I'm shooting for is to get the wheels back on the tractor. I'm going to get new rubber all the way around. i got to clean and paint the rims and that's always a big job in the wheel centers. Get the tires on so I can push it out of here while I'm painting parts and push it in and out. It's light enough where it's really easy to do. So I'll be working toward that next. It's going to take me a while to procure tires and get things cleaned off but after I do I'll be back again with more Super C work. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.